as a start, we need to represent, we're going to represent multiplying, dividing of fractions with concrete objects. So one of the things is those pattern blocks, all right? And it's asking you things like um, represent, represent something like, I mean, the first one was represent a half times uh, three. There's three times a half, right? Three times one half. Okay, so the statement is, what is three times a half? Okay, three times one half. And what is, it's saying what is that, right? To represent it, um, you can represent the three times one half like that, right? That's three times one half. If you want to write that in a more simple way, you can put things together, right? You can obviously put these together. And you've got instead, what have you got? What can you call that instead? One and one half, right? You can call it one and one half. Or you need to be able to represent it. Obviously, when you're in grade 12, you're not going to be using pattern blocks to work with fractions. But some people forget what fractions actually mean. And then they start to give answers that make no sense, right? If you have a half and you multiply it by three, you're more likely to get that right, I think, if you just think about it like a, a six or seven year old would, then trying to think, oh, what is the rule? What am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to multiply. What do I do here? Multiply the top, the bottom. If I said to you when you were seven years old, you have a half a cookie and somebody comes along and triples that, they times it by three, how much do you have? You'd say, I have one and a half cookies, right? Or what's the other way to write that? What's the other way to write one and a half? This is as a mixed number. What's the other way to write that? What's the other way to write it? Well, it's called as an improper fraction, right? How do you write it as an improper fraction? One and one half is the same as... How many halves do you have? How many halves do you have? Three halves, right? These are equivalent. We we got to get where we see that these are the same thing. It's called an improper because the top number is bigger, but that's okay. You can have that, right? We are looking for a shortcut from how, for how to get from here to here, okay? Because if I if I ask you, I've asked a lot of people in going around here, and some people say I say three times a half, and they say it's three over six. Why is it not three over six? It's not 3 over 6. You don't times the denominator. Remember for a fraction, what does the denominator tell you? When you have 1 half, the denominator tells you, what are we working with? The denominator here, the fact that this is 2 tells you which of the shapes are you working with out of that bucket you have. Which color shape are you dealing with? If the bottom's a 2, what color, what size shape are those things? What pattern block are we working with? The red ones, right? That's telling you how big the pieces are. It's saying take one whole thing and divide it into two. The top number doesn't tell you what size piece you're dealing with. It tells you how many you have. If you have one out of two, you have one of the red ones. If you times that by three, you still have the red ones, but how many do you have? Three of them. Don't time, When you times a whole number by a fraction, don't times the bottom number. The next one they ask you to represent is 4 times 1 sixth. And I think a lot of you were struggling because, you, again, you thought it was hard, it had to be harder than it was, right? If we clear this off here, this green one is 1 sixth. You have, it says times 4, right? So you have 4 of them. If you have 4 times 1 sixth, how much do I have? How much do I have? i got to tilt one of these like that. Not quite, maybe like this. How many do I have? Tip that one. Okay, so that's, what is this called altogether? What do you call that? That's what your picture should look like. If you have one sixth and you times it by four, you have four sixths. You don't have four something else's, right? You have four sixths. If I have four times one sixth, I have four sixths. You multiply the top numbers because you say that's how many you have. You don't multiply the bottom numbers. What would be the most common wrong answer here? What's the most common wrong answer? What do you think? What's the most common wrong answer? 
Not sure? Okay. What do you think? 4 24 Do you see why it's not 4 24 What would this mean? What would the 24 on the bottom mean? Yeah, like, I, I people think, okay, I times both of them by 4. You don't times both of them by 4, you just times the top. If you times the bottom, you're going to end up saying, I got really small pieces, right? You're cutting up the little triangles into more, right? 4 times 1 6 is 4 6. Okay, let's grab a picture of this. Okay, that's what it is, 4 6. That thing is 4 6, and that's the picture you're going to have. You could also multiply, or you could also represent it with rectangles. You could represent it with number lines. You could represent it a lot of ways. Okay, that's one way to represent it. Here's another way you could represent it. You could say, if I have 1 6, here's, here's one whole rectangle. And if I start counting off 6, there's 1 6, right? And um, if I color in another sixth, there's another sixth, and here's another sixth, and then one more is that, right? You have four sixths of the rectangle shaded in, four times one sixth. Later on, you're going to see, not in this, not in that explore the math, but you're going to see that you can represent it with a number line. You've made number lines before, but you probably haven't represented them where fractions are allowed. If this is zero, and you want to be able to show sixth on here, where should I put the one? Should I put the one right here? The best place to put the one would be how many spaces? If I want to be able to show sixth, I should put the one right there. Because then, what does each one of those spaces represent? If I make six spaces for one, what is each one of those spaces? What is each one of those jumps on the number line? It's part of it. What part of it is it? How much is this? That's how much of a jump is that? This is one. So this is one sixth. Exactly. If I go four times one sixth, if I do four jumps of one sixth, what is that the same as? Instead of four individual jumps of one sixth, what can I call it? Four sixths. Even when you have a fraction that is bigger than one, like the third question in that Explore the Math says, take four thirds. It talks about thirds, so I'm going to put zero here, and I'm going to make, um, I'm going to make for this one, I'm going to make this one. There's one, that's two, that's three. Number lines are good for fractions because it's easy to make it whatever, whatever you want to make it. Where would four thirds be on there, on that number line? If I wanted to show four thirds on here, where's four thirds going to be? If this is one on my number line, how much would that be? What's that called? For this particular number line, how much is that going to be? If this is one, and I've divided into three spaces, each of those is one third. So where's four thirds? This is one, two, three. That's where four thirds is, right? Four thirds is that jump right there. That's four thirds. Can you see that that's four thirds? Why is why is that one third more than one? Four thirds is like one and a third. There's a jump of four thirds. In your in that activity, it says, "What am I multiplying this by?" I closed this textbook now, I think, but yes, I did. I think it says in there, "What is four thirds times two? If I have two jumps of four thirds. What do I have? What's that the same as? What can I call that? What can I call that? If you have two jumps of four thirds, what's that the same as? You're not sure? You're afraid to say something? Well, you can say it's, you can call it two things. You can call it two and two thirds, right? Because you got one, two, and then an extra two thirds there. Or what, what could you call it as an improper fraction? You can absolutely call it eight-thirds, right? Because if you count the little jumps, if each one is one-third, then you got eight-thirds. You need to be able to represent fractions a bunch of different ways. That Explore the Math asks you to represent it with pattern blocks and rectangles. You can represent it with number lines. A lot of people are going to like the number lines a lot better in some ways because they're quicker to draw. But it doesn't matter. Plus, you can make them any, you can make them fifths or sevenths or whatever you need. Pattern blocks, we're stuck with making them sixths, 
thirds, whatever. Can you get back to working on that? You need to finish that Explore the Math before you go. And you need to get started on working on the examples before you go. All right?